Good evening, everyone. Fine now. Just give me a moment. We will start very shortly. Shivangi, are you there? Yeah, I, I'm okay now. Yeah. It is regular session. Why did you ask that? Okay. Shivangi, why uh, your name is appearing twice? Are you sure you are the real Shivangi? Yes, I'm okay now. Okay, uh, all right. All right. Um, a minute, I, I just start the screen so everyone of you can see it. Okay. All right, then. Yeah, I'm fine now. Okay, so this, this is what we discussed the last time. I asked you to solve a couple of questions based on this, right? As homework. Now, uh, we're going to continue with it, right? Uh, so this time, uh, I think we we might just have to, uh, we will go on to dielectric, if I'm not wrong. Mm, yeah. Yeah, fine. Let's talk about dielectric now. Okay.
okay so like i did mention earlier but we just start fresh dielectrics are insulators right okay and uh, we use them often in capacitor because a capacitor is defined or is something where there are two conductors and between the two conductors there is an insulator right so what's the use of dielectric in capacitor let me tell you that first okay let me tell you the use of dielectric in capacitor all right see it is that suppose these are plates okay i'm just talking about parallel plate capacitor but same thing is true for all kinds of capacitor right suppose these are the two plates of the parallel plate capacitor now i'm sure you understand that if if there is let's say air here okay and you have started charging it right if there is air here and you have uh, sorry and you have started charging this so there is negative charge on this plate right but what happens is gradually as more and more charge is deposited the electric field becomes stronger right okay the electric field becomes strong and a point will come where the electric field is so strong that the electrons from this plate will start jumping through the air i repeat when the electric field becomes very strong the uh, the electrons from one plate will start jumping to the other plate directly that is what i mean to say is although air is generally an insulator right air is generally an insulator right current does not pass through air or charges can't flow through air in normal circumstances but i am sure you you know what is lightning strike isn't it right when lightning occurs charge flows through air right so it is because at that time the electric field created by the clouds is very strong so due to that so due to that what happens is that air which is actually an insulator in normal circumstances because of the strong electric field the electrons or the charges they get so much force that they will flow even through this right okay so there is basically a limit there is basically a limit all kinds of insulator if you give them a very strong electric field their internal molecular structure will get damaged or changed right what i am saying is that the bonds inside those and all those get broken right so the properties of the insulator will change and it will start conducting right for air for air to start conducting it needs electric field of this order atlu electric field hai ne so air ma di jane current flow thaam bande that is air will pass charge it will allow charge to flow right and this is what happens during a lightning strike and it can also happen in a capacitor right it's not a problem right there are devices which can create a very strong electric field or very high voltage right so basically what we are talking about here is that suppose you take a capacitor let's say with air right then you can only charge it up to some limit because if you charge it above that limit the electric field becomes so strong that there will be a spark and charge will flow directly from here to there right then the capacitor will not work i i hope you realize why because if negative charge will flow from here to there it will neutralize it right okay so there will be spark and this capacitor will get damaged so such a situation listen to this carefully such situation when this happens is called dielectric breakdown okay it is called dielectric breakdown dielectric simply means insulator breakdown means damage all right okay so when the electric field becomes so strong that charges flow through the insulator i know it's an insulator but still the electric field is so strong that it can make charges flow even through that 
so such a situation is called dielectric breakdown all right and and the value of sorry the minimum value of electric field minimum value of electric field for which minimum value of electric field for which breakdown occurs or breakdown happens easy language is called dielectric strength how a question in our board exam ma puchyo to book ni be thi line je pan aa to toi tamne khas kai do pachi koi ne evno thai ke aavto no tu aavyo kan ke mane ek be seniors evo kidu to ke sir aavu to kya aave je book ma aipu j nahi okay so again what is dielectric breakdown when the insulator starts to pass current or starts to allow charge to flow that's called in dielectric breakdown and the minimum value of electric field for which that will happen is called dielectric strength what the what is the relation of all these okay it's that if you take a capacitor with air and you charge it too much then it will get damaged there will be dielectric breakdown and and the charges will flow and the circuit will not work so that's why listen to this carefully that's why what we do is typically instead of air suppose between the plates suppose between the plates we put some other material okay let's say we put some dielectric means some insulator like this let's say okay so what happens is that it has such properties listen to it it has such properties that the electric field will not be that high i repeat the electric field inside insulator will be not very high it will be lower compared to outside right so it will be safe okay it will be able to store more charge okay why why does that happen that's what we are going to talk about now okay right so let's start let's start so first of all we are going to talk about what happens if you put a dielectric inside electric field okay if you put a dielectric inside electric field dielectric again means insulator all right so let's have a look at its chemistry first of all typically these are dielectric or insulators are you know typically those compounds where the electrons cannot be free right or ions cannot be free so you can think that you can think that what happens is that more or less suppose this is a molecule then wherever the positive or the negative charges are they are very close to one another right so it's it's probably going to be like this plus over here and minus over here immediately close to it right that is plus and minus are at the same place so there is a very very small or negligible charge separation charge separation means distance right between positive and negative charge there will be very less distance right but now if you put it inside field okay this is what happens without field suppose you put it inside a field let's say this is some electric field right so i'm sure you know that if you put positive and negative charges in electric field then positive charge will be pushed right side and negative charge will be pushed towards left side as shown in this diagram so now there will be some separation is this clear okay are these diagrams clear yes or no this is negligible charge separation okay so right now right now what we are talking about is 
for the case of non polar okay right now we are talking about the case of non polar molecules right but even with polar molecules there is a very nice thing it's that suppose this is a polar molecule all right maybe something like hcl okay even the last time i was giving you an example of hcl right suppose we talk about hcl molecule right which is polar so what will happen is that let's say you take some uh, you know some liquid here we are i know i'm take i'm talking about hcl but frankly all this theory is about solids only okay it's not about liquids let me tell you that okay all this theory is about solids only we are going to study about solids all right but yes yeah, similar ideas hold for liquids also but that's not a part of our syllabus right okay so i'm just giving you a simple example because you know of hcl molecule very well from chemistry that's why i'm choosing hcl okay there's no other reason so suppose you think that there is hcl molecule right then it has clearly charged separation like you used to write it like this correct so what happens is that here there is already charged separation right so there is already dipole moment right there is already dipole moment but i think you can easily understand that in any kind of situation in any kind of situation molecules are always doing some kind of random motion so it is not necessary it is not necessary that every molecule of hcl is aligned or you know is in this fashion only so for example this has a small dipole moment like this correct in the right hand uh, sorry in the left hand direction this one also would have in the left hand direction but all are not aligned right if one is like this there will be another one which will be maybe like this right then there might be a third one which is like this i i think all of you understand what i'm drawing right so it's possible that when you take a substance when you take a you know maybe some object made up of some compound which is a insulator right if you take some insulator then inside it these molecules would be random randomly arranged okay right they would be randomly arranged it's not necessary that all are in the same same direction so what happens is that without the field without the field the net dipole moment okay see we are talking about without the field the net dipole moment right when external field is zero when external field is zero net dipole moment is zero because of random okay because of randomness right but what would happen if you put a dipole these are dipoles right suppose you take three different dipoles let's say like this right okay and put all of them in a uniform electric field maybe like this we are going to talk about uniform field only all right everyone so what will happen i'm sure you realize that all the dipoles will get aligned aligned that is they will turn the dipoles will turn so that positive is on this side negative is on this side this one will also turn so that it's like this and this third one will also turn like this understood that's what i mean they will get aligned right so now if you think of the net dipole moment it's not zero right if you think of net dipole moment now it won't be zero because earlier it was random okay every every molecule or every dipole was arranged randomly but now what we are having is they've got aligned now once they get aligned it's not random it's all in one direction so the net electric field sorry so the net dipole moment will be in direction of external electric field do you understand this sentence i'm just going to pause over here for a moment right and this is happening because the dipoles get aligned did you understand this sentence
एकदम कॉन्सेप्ट अभी कई मैथ वेथ आयुज नहीं वॉट एवर वी हेव लर्न अर्लियर देट वॉट वी हेव यूज हियर राइट Okay, better diagrams I'm sure are given in the textbook, right? Okay, and you see what happens is that even in this case, look at this. If you, if you look at this non-polar case, here there was negligible charge separation, so dipole moment was nearly zero. But now here, because charges have separated, so now here also there is some dipole moment, right? And in which direction? In the same direction as external field, correct? Right? So I'm sure you realize that this sentence is true in both cases, non-polar. This sentence is true in both cases, non-polar and polar, right? Is that clear? right so this is the basic i mean where this is the base reason of why uh, electric field inside the dipole uh, sorry inside the dielectric is less so let's talk about let's talk about a slab suppose there is a slab what's a slab slab means cuboid okay right okay so let's talk about a slab so you see what happens is this is a side view of the slab okay i don't want to draw it in 3d suppose this is a slab right and it's placed in a uniform field all right uniform external electric field all right okay let's call it e0 okay let's call it e0 so i'm saying that over here in the whole space everywhere there is e0 field right which is uniform so because of that what happens is that charges get separated or the dipoles you can think that they get aligned like this everywhere right i think you get the idea of what i am saying right like this they will get aligned because the electric field is towards the right side okay so they will get aligned like this so what you can think of is as follows see it's like conductors okay this is for insulator Okay, and here I'm drawing it for conductor. Suppose this was a conductor instead of that. What would happen? I'm sure you realize that the charges will flow and they will settle like this. Correct? But here, see, they can't flow. Don't forget, they can't flow. Right? The charges can't flow. So what has happened is, first this was neutral. That is, both the charges were together, positive, negative. Now this has just got a little bit separated. like this okay similarly here it was both together plus and minus now it has just got a little bit separated like that it has got separated everywhere right so it has not broken off it has only got separated that's what we are talking about right it's not flowing like this right so now if you think of what's happening is that because of all these charges separated there is lot of dipole moment inside over here because of all these charges right so you can you can actually think of it as follows right you could think that on the left surface sorry on the left surface over here you can say that there is some negative charge deposited right on the right surface you could say that there is some positive charge deposited right okay bad drawing i'll just draw it again i'm saying that on the right surface you could think that some positive charge is deposited but yes don't forget don't forget this charge has not flown right this is exactly the same charge that was here but it has just got separated is the a plus minus now minus say and a minus plus now plus say okay that's what we are considering we can say that here in the bulk we can say that here in the bulk bulk means inside okay the net is zero net charge is zero but there is charge on surface right there is charge on surface that's what we are considering all right okay see there are charges definitely right this is a this is an easy way 
is an easy way to analyze the situation a conductor jev nahi here there is absolutely no charge right i hope you realize why because if there is a charge here it will flow right that's what we have learned correct okay there is absolutely no charge here if you are talking about electrostatic right here the situation is slightly different right here there are charges but you can say that in the bulk means on the inside you could say that the net charge is zero the total charge is going to be zero because we are saying that charges have got separated but still the leftmost will have some charge because there is nothing to neutralize this and the rightmost will have some charge and there is nothing to neutralize it that's what we are saying so now if i say that what's the electric field at this point now there are two things one electric field that is coming from from the outside okay just a minute wrong choice of color i'm just saying that there is electric field coming from outside external and also because of these bound charges okay because of these bound charges i am calling them bound charges right these are called bound charges bound because they can't flow right so we have these bound charges they they will create their own electric field but this is positive on right side and negative on left side so its own electric field will be towards the left side so you could call this eb right so what is what is the symbol here e0 for external field and eb for field due to bound charge okay right so there are two fields here inside the dielectric there are two fields inside dielectric slab there are two opposite fields right okay two opposite fields right which to one external and second due to bound charge right okay so you could say that the net field net electric field on the sorry net electric field inside dielectric net electric field inside dielectric slab is e which is equal to i don't think anyone has any problem with this right clear so far i i, I just want to wait here if you have some questions is this clear so far again eb is created by these charges right can they be equal okay cordel right let me take in everybody's question then i'll answer it okay if anyone else has questions about what i've explained so far all right okay So I'm assuming everything is clear, right? So Cordell is asking whether can these two be equal? Okay, the answer is no, can't be equal. All right, definitely EB cannot be equal to E zero, right? And in fact, EB is, uh, you know, a little bit less, right? Okay, EB is not going to be as big as E zero, in fact, ever, right? Why? Let me explain. the reason is the reason is that uh, it's a insulator right so what happens in an insulator and what happens in conductor we'll compare then you'll understand in a in a conductor right the moment you set up this electric field from outside right what happens is that the electrons which are free electrons right there are free electrons in conductor they are, they can move very easily so that's what will happen right the free electrons will start settling the free electrons will easily settle on this side right 
So that's why what will happen is that uh, it, that process will just continue until both are equal. But here it's not the case. Here we are typically talking about uh, you know molecules, right? And I'm sure you understand that molecules generally covalent molecules, right? Okay, covalent. Uh, in many molecules, there are covalent bonds. They don't like to throw their electron away, right? Yes, Vishwa, we are answering that question only, right? I repeat, I repeat, think of what you have learned in chemistry, right? There are covalent bonds in insulators, correct? I'm sure you know that, right? And such covalent bonds, their molecules don't like to throw away their electrons. For example, if you think of HCl, right? You have this typical picture that one electron is shared. So do you think, do you think that if we apply a little bit of electric field, then this H molecule will go away completely, sorry, not in this direction, in that direction. Will it be removed by a very weak field? Of course not, right? Because the covalent bond is not something that can break that easily, right? It's not like free electron, correct, of metal, right? So that's the difference. So what happens is, what happens is that even though, even though there is an electric field like this, right? But the magnitude of the charge here and here is very less. Again, right? There will be, there will be very little, there will be very little dipole moment. Okay. And there will be very little charge separation and there will be very little bound electric field, right? That is this value will not be very high because ultimately the insulators have covalent bonds and they don't allow everything to go away separate way easily like free electron. Fine. So that's the reason why you're always going to have EB less than E0, right? Okay, in this kind of situation, you're always going to have EB less than E0 and that's why they are not equal and this cannot be zero, all right? Okay. Yes, quoted exactly, because if charges will not go away, right? then dipole moment will be less. I'm sure you understand that dipole moment depends on charge separation, right? Okay, and the electric field of a dipole, either way, is definitely proportional to P, correct? B formula, gamma the axis, equator, J tam koi, right? But electric field of a dipole is proportional to P. So if P is less because they can't go away, right? Okay, that's why this will also be less and this is what happens in insulator, right? In conductor, the free electrons just move away and they just go out, right? So there the electric field is more, the induced field is more, right? Here the induced field is very less. Okay, fine. I think we should, uh, uh, I mean, that's enough discussion about that point, right? So now that is something which you should definitely understand right that this will never be equal to zero because of this and that is because of the covalent bonds or the insulators chemical property now the question is if it's not equal to zero then how much all right that's what we are going to try and figure out all right it's not zero okay but then can we can we give it a value can we find its value that's what we'll do Okay, listen to this carefully. Now see, situation is not very simple for dielectric as it was simple for metals, right? Yes, it will be a small value, right? EB will be generally very small. Okay, so typically, situation for dielectrics is not as simple as metal because uh, different compounds different compounds based on their molecules properties uh, will behave differently so here listen to this very carefully here we are in our syllabus we are only going to talk about some kind of dielectrics called linear 
isotropic dielectric okay we are only going to talk about this linear isotropic dielectric now this looks like a very tough phrase but it's very simple to understand okay why is this called isotropic let me explain that okay what is meaning of isotropic dielectric right let me explain here what is meaning of isotropic dielectric that's what i'm explaining isotropic dielectric means the bound charge dipole moment right bound charge means the charges that have got separated because of the electric field right that's what i drawn earlier okay so the bound charge dipole moment actually i should just write word net net means total right net bound charge dipole moment of the dielectric is parallel or in same direction right to elect external electric field okay this is the situation where it is called isotropic dielectric all right i know you would obviously have a question what kind of dielectrics are there which don't follow this well there are it would happen in case of complicated molecular shapes and all that all right okay but this is a good assumption actually we can assume that many times or almost in almost in all cases we are going to have that the bound charge dipole moment is in the same direction as the external field so what we are saying is that the whole dielectric slab or dielectric substance has a total dipole moment which is in the same direction as the external electric field right that's called uh, that's called isotropic dielectric now what is linear okay that's also very easy linear means it is related to mass something like this okay so what is linear what is the meaning of linear here it is as follows it is that the net dipole moment the net dipole moment it's a vector of course is proportional to the electric field inside right e for electric field inside like i have written over here okay everyone okay so i am saying that linear means linear iso linear dielectric means that the net dipole moment of this Uh, of this slab is proportional to the electric field inside it now this is actually very i mean this is very simple assumption i'm sure you would realize it that if the electric field is stronger right if, whenever you are going to create a stronger electric field you whenever you are going to give it a stronger electric field the the charges are going to be separated more all right and they will have and they will have more dipole moment okay so that's what we are talking about right okay so it's a very simple assumption right that if the electric field is stronger that means the net dipole moment is also be going to be more all right so that's it for this property all right okay so we are only going to have these two assumptions right always in all questions in your syllabus you are only going to have these two kind of cases yes coder you are right okay so keep these two in mind all right keep these two in mind and now we are going to talk about now we are going to talk about another property of such a dielectric slab all right so let's write it it's a very important property everyone 
okay you make sure you write the definition and the formula as well all right Let's start. polarization okay that's the def that's the term okay what is polarization polarization is the net induced dipole moment this is of course due to bound charges a lokhu chu tamne samjhay ena mate ha all right the net induced dipole moment due to bound charges right net induced dipole moment due to bound charges per unit volume of dielectric slab or dielectric is called polarization okay this is called polarization remember right so what's this this means polarization symbol mane khare khare yaad nahi ane tamari book ma e use kare je ke kai biju lake je e humna joi ne kau right but polarization i'll write the symbol over here is equal to net induced dipole moment divided by volume it's a vector mind wave it is a vector okay right ओके सिंबल जो ही ले लेट मी सी तू लग के चालू को थैंक यू इफ यू फाइंड इट यू प्लीज टेल मी आई एम स्टिल सर्चिंग फॉर इट इन द बुक ओके दे आर राइटिंग कैपिटल पी ऑल राइट दे आर राइटिंग कैपिटल पी for polarization yes okay so be careful all right be careful do not get confused between net dipole moment and capital p okay capital p right this is polarization and this is total dipole moment right i hope you realize that there is a difference between them right this is the total dipole moment of all those tiny dipoles that are formed right or aligned or whatever right in the whole slab right ibadani dipole moment total charge right and this is that dipole moment per unit volume voltage nahi ya volume okay now we are going to derive a simple relation about this polarization okay we are going to derive a simple relation about this polarization and remember from now on all our discussion will be limited exclusively to a slab slab that is cuboid let's start so suppose this is a cuboid of dielectric all right and it is placed in some external uniform field all right e0 external uniform field e0 then like i said that there will be charges that are you could say that the charges are only over here right because everything inside it can be considered to be neutralized okay net charge can be considered to be zero over here right so now suppose that it's a cuboid right it's a slab it's a cuboid so in anyway, a uh, the left face or the right face or you know area of an i'm sure you realize what i'm saying okay right so this area where the negative charge is and where the positive charge is let's say that the face area is a face area of slab is a all right okay right then think of p net 
p net that is dipole moment induced because of this ye am out hai clear the dipole moment induced is from oh sorry from the negative charge towards the positive charge okay this is the direction of p net i was making a blunder all right so that's what we have now if i want to find out what is the polarization p vector then it is equal to p net divided by the volume right direction to badane cover padi gayi it will be in the direction of external field right okay so if we talk about magnitude now okay direction is of course same as external field right because we are talking about linear isotropic dielectric right what about magnitude capital p is equal to p net divided by volume correct so that is equal to what's p net see dipole moment means charge magnitude multiplied by distance suppose this distance is width okay let's call it d let's say let's call it d let's say this width is d then i could write it as okay fine i'll write one more step is this clear qb for what here suppose total bound charge is minus qb and here total bound charge is plus qb a capacitor no thing ha ji capacitor ni baat nat karta okay did you understand that total bound charge is qb right so you could just write it here where qb is the magnitude of bound charge on the surface right so now if we continue it from here then if i can also define a sigma b right sigma b for what surface charge density of bound charges so you could write if surface charge density of bound charges is sigma b right okay then this capital p will become equal to see i didn't realize i was wasting space so this capital p will become equal to sigma b into a into d upon v clear but v is also a into d avu apne humna je ek var padu to is that okay right so so we get this is equal to sigma b in magnitude right this is equal to sigma b in magnitude right okay right so what we have found is that polarization its magnitude polarization magnitude is actually equal to surface charge density of bound charges right that's what we have proven remember we are doing all this discussion and in your syllabus all this discussion is only about a slab means a cuboid never any other shape all right okay fine now how can we write whole formula with direction okay and why only slab first of all let me answer how to write for direction see you can you can actually if you are going to write it about direction then you have various problems suppose you take dielectric which is in form of uh, you know suppose you take dielectric which is in form of this right okay so here is one conductor 
this is insulator and suppose here is another conductor right so this is insulator between two conductors right avu hoy actual capacitor ava bada hoy right the ones that we now use in these days right in circuit so suppose you take it this way then the the problem is that here the charges are going to be induced something like this right so this is bound charge and maybe there is bound charge here right so then the dipole moment will be in different direction i i hope you realize what i am saying right okay so because of that the net dipole moment it's not possible to write only in one direction right you'll have to choose multiple directions or maybe you could write it is radial you understand what i'm saying maybe you could write that it is radial something like r hat but like i've said all that becomes complicated very quickly right if you are going to take any other shape except a slab right that's why such things are not included in your syllabus right in fact avi rite tumhe spherical lo ne to total dipole moment zero aave i hope you realize why because dipole moment is a vector so bada ni cut thai jase opposite same same cut thai jaye so net dipole moment to zero aave then it's not proper to define it like that okay so pachi definition e badlai jaye pachi definition aavi aave if that makes sense to you right it is a small dipole moment in a small portion per unit volume e badu pachi agar complicated tha right so that's why we are only going to talk about slab right and also if you want to write it in form of a vector formula then you can only do it for a slab easily right and ema lakhu hoy to pachi ema kai bo vandho nahi you can see you can clearly see that for this slab the dipole moment is perpendicular to this surface correct okay so ena mate apne normal vector lakhi sakte directly so what i am saying is if you want to write p vector then you could put something of this kind where n hat indicate normal all right so you kar sakte right that is definitely possible all right so remember what i have said uh, you don't have to worry about any other shapes because it gets complicated right etle tamari book ma chhe ne eu kai i put nothi samjhaun okay so that's what we have right now let's continue from here aa badu vector vector form mai ta bahu puchhatu hi nahi vector so scalar form mai nahi puchhatu pan aa to khali je ne aa derivation ma agar ek jagah kaam aave eu che ne etle karo but i frankly don't remember when was a question related to all this asked in last time in board exam bahu bahu to puche to ahi sudhi puche je an definition bas ena thi agar generally bahu puchta nahi but yes still uh, you know uh, why you should do it very nicely because there is a topic in fifth chapter which is related to this khali ema electric field nahi aave ema magnetic field aave right there you have some details right okay so a thodu avardu hoy to tya fatafat thai jaye biju kai nahi right anyway so that's it right ओके वेक्टर फॉर्म में नहीं लखो तो चाल से मैं जब कि खाली वैल्यू थी मतलब छे डायरेक्शन नु बहु कई मतलब न दे यहां देखाय छे इन डायरेक्शन ऑफ एक्सटर्नल फील्ड राइट ओके नाउ गोइंग फर्दर अच्छा टाइप पति गए थे देयर इज ओनली 1 मिनट रिमेनिंग आई डिडंट रियलाइज दैट हां ऑलराइट now next time we are going to see what happens when we put it inside a capacitor right okay at least this would have given you some basic idea that it's now like two sheets correct this whole thing is behaving like two sheets one of positive charge or oh, sorry unda the kya one of negative charge and one of positive charge so i'm sure you can think about what is the bound electric field 
can someone just give me that idea come on can you realize can you think about what is that bound electric field what will be eg now if you say that this is surface charge density sigma b what will be eb can you think about that etlu kai do paji puru kare karavis next time a to khali atyare let's see whether you can use what we have learned so far okay purvendra that's right zero to no ja ave ne kodal chaitya zero no ave ne to atli badi lap chu kam karta hot barabar ne yes jia well done very good avinash eb is equal to e zero devan it to samjayu a zero ave to to conductor jevu thai jay ne which is not true right ના દર્શી એવી રીતે તો લખવાનું જ આપણે વી આર ગોઈંગ ટુ રાઈટ ધેટ ઈ ઇઝ ઇક્વલ ટુ ઈ ઝીરો માઇનસ ઈ બી તો તું એવું કહીશ તો તો નહીં ચાલે ને આ શું કોડ લા ક્યાંથી લઈ આવ્યો નો આવી કઈ ફોર્મ્યુલા છે ટુ કે સિગમા બાય આર ક્યુબ ને એવી એવી ક્યાં ફોર્મ્યુલા છે કોઈ ओके फाइन आई एम ग्लेड दैट यू ऑल ट्राइड कई वांट नहीं वी विल डिस्कस दिस द नेक्स्ट टाइम राइट दिस द फर्स्ट थिंग दैट वी आर गोइंग टू डू पी बाय बी ना दर्शी एवरीवन ऑल राइट गुड बाय एवरीवन